It was once believed that the world was not round. Check out the buns. But flat. That is flat. Okay, class. Interesting guy, man, and uh, you know he believes it. So, Kyrie, the Earth is flat, right? Yeah. 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 So whatever. That's news. That's news. Here we go. <laughs> you are now tuning into the truth frequency. Your protection from, 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 from deception. This is Truth Frequency Radio. Broadcasting straight to you from a large spaceship, currently anchored over Raleigh, North Carolina, eagerly awaiting the 2017 International Flat Earth Conference coming this fall. Hello, everyone, and welcome to Strange World, where the truth is often stranger than fiction. I'm your host, Mark Sargent, the creator of Flat Earth Clues, which propose that all of us are living inside a Truman Show enclosed structure thousands of miles wide. Check it out at enclosedworld.com or just Google Flat Earth Clues. If you can't find it, that's because you're still stunned by the fact my phones now work. Uh, That was the best I could come up with, short notice. For those of you listening to this on YouTube and you want to hear the show live as it happens, please go to Truth Frequency Radio for the latest schedule. Currently, this show is on Tuesday nights at 7 Pacific, 10 Eastern. If it is not Tuesday night at that time, then you're listening to a rerun. And if you try to call the phone number... It's not going to go anywhere. I may go to voicemail, actually, and I will listen to them. Quote of the day from the peanut gallery. In questions of science, the authority of a thousand is not worth the humble reasoning of a single individual. That's from Galileo Galilei. And yeah, sorry, peanut gallery also wanted me to remind you today is June 27th. So if it's not June 27th, it is also a rerun. There you go. 27th of June. Yes, you didn't have to tell me it was the 27th. Jeez. All right. A quick shout out before I get into the announcements to Johnny Armstrong of Smithville, Missouri, who sent me a Research Flat Earth t-shirt. Thank you. I get a lot of t-shirts, and that one was a really cool one. It's gray with, and I'll show it off on Patricia's show tomorrow as well. And see here. Announcements. Flat Earth announcements. Jeffrey Grupp, debate challenge, still in effect. Anyone wants to argue against Flat Earth, blah, 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 you know the the deal there. There is a meetup, Mixer. It's going to be in Houston. The event will be hosted by Patricia Steer, the queen of Flat Earth herself. That's going to be Sunday, July 2nd at 7 p.m. Houston, Texas at La Griglia. La Griglia? G-R-I-G-L-I-A. Griglia. It's an Italian restaurant. In River Oaks, it's going to be a four-course meal. She's hosting. She's catering the whole thing. Four-course meal. you got to pay for your own drinks. And there will be a Flat Earth documentary film crew at the restaurant shooting this thing. So be prepared to look your best. And if you don't want to be interviewed, that's fine. You don't have to. You don't have to do it. The parking is free. Valet parking is optional. If you have a limo, you know, try to, you know, Plan ahead on that one. La Griglia. 
I'm going to have to figure out that one. It's located at 2002 West Gray Street in Houston, Texas. You can RSVP to Miss Steer, that's M-I-S-S-S-T-E-E-R-E at gmail.com. <clears throat> Peanut Gallery also said there's a party at Candy's. And uh, yeah, I'm going to need a little more information than that because if I just say party at Candy's, people are going, woohoo, let's go. They'll have nowhere to go. So shoot me the info there. Peanut calorie. There is a flat earth rally on the Canadian side of Niagara Falls on Canada Day. That's coming up July 1st from noon until 4. You can email N as in Nancy, F as in Fred, F as in Freddy's, and Edward at gmail.com or flat earth Hamilton at gmail.com. They'll give you all the details there. The big money challenge is still in effect. You want to go against flat earth so you can think you can improve the globe? Please, by all means, email. Kathy Dunson, that's P-E-R-E-L-A-N-D-R-A-77 at gmail.com. Para, para, <coughs> excuse me, Paralandra, I need some tea. Landra at gmail.com. I just got off an interview, so my voice is a little scratchy. D-I-T-R-H is doing a billboard. It's going up near the conference center. There's a GoFundMe called A Stranger's Guide to Flat Earth or F-E Billboard. It's going to be September, October, November. It's a printed billboard, not an electronic one. We can send people to stand under it with FE signs when we are there. That's very, very cool. It's going to be a conference coming up, which will feature Flat Earth. Rob Skiba is the Christian side of things. Rob Skiba will be uh, representing the Flat Earth. The website for the event is takeontheworld17.com. Phone number, to, by the way, to call in is 720, because we've got the phone lines working, 720-897-6111. That is 720-897-6111. Operators are standing by, and by that I mean me. There's also, as if, if there wasn't enough announcements, the Danoon Institute of Biblical Research presents the Summer 2017 Conference. It will be August 5th and 6th. Total conference price is $25. The highlight of the conference is a live debate, Globe versus Flat Earth. This is going to be in Atlanta, by the way, at the Holiday Inn Gwinnett, G-W-I-N-N-E-T-T Center. It's going to feature Zen Garcia on the Flat Earth side versus Dr. Stephen Pigeon, spelled differently, P-I-D-G-E-O-N. That's going to be Atlanta. You guys can look that up if you get a chance. should be a lot of fun. I don't know. I'm going to try to attend. I really am going to try to attend. But there may be some medical things with my family I have to help out with driving people to and from the hospital. So we'll see. We'll see. At the very least, I, I know I'm going to be at the November conference, but I, I'm going to try to go there. I'm not even going to book tickets to that uh, Zen Garcia thing until l- in middle of July. <clears throat> Let's see. Lots of good words for you today. Oh, good. Lots of good words. Okay. Phone number, 720-897-6111. That is 720-897-6111. And while we are waiting for the phone calls, let's go into an email, shall we? This one's called Flat Earth Question. Good evening. I'm a 50-year-old female, well-educated with a high IQ, and I am now officially a fellow Flat Earther. I recently discovered your YouTube channel. And let's see if they can pick up this phone call or not. Nope, dropped off. 215. You tried? Try again. 215. I have a backup number, by the way. If if you call in and it fails for whatever reason, because I am forwarding this, I will give you the backup number. The backup number is 213-233-3998. That is 213-233-3998. Both of them go to the same call board. Okay. Wait, did something just close? What just happened? Am I, am I on? Peanut Gallery, am I on? Oh, he's talking about the emails. Okay, let's pick up a call, shall we? This is 619 area code out of California. What's going on? Hola, senor. Hola. I, I don't know <laughs> Spanish, so if you got more than that, I'm going to probably well, That be means suffering. hello. Uh, no, I know that. <laughs> anyway. I just say, don't, don't, don't go all Spanish on me. What, uh, what's up? Okay, no. Um, so, <clears throat> yeah, you know, I, I actually use... Um, I use flat earth as sort of like a litmus test of uh, people that I want to continue conversing with. Uh, you know, if when I meet somebody and they seem in- interesting, uh, I'll bring up flat earth and see what the reaction is. Nice. You know, nice. You bring they, it to bring. They take, 
Huh? Did you bring anything else up? Well, yeah, they. Uh, well, that's that's pretty much the 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 gateway for me. Okay. Um, to see a person's openness to uh, new ideas or to to even thinking about things that they never thought about before, you know. When a person just automatically poo-poos it and shuts me out, you know, I, I know right away that's a person I can't connect with. Agreed. Agreed. But um, but I'll tell you, I'll tell you, I, I do have a couple of questions. Sure. Um, one, of, my main question is, uh, how do you explain a uh, lunar eclipse? For me, it's easy because remember, I go with the whole planetarium firmament model. And a lunar eclipse, let's see here, different ways we could go with this. The simple version is that everything in the sky is possible. If you can do a lunar eclipse in a, we're talking a solar eclipse or a lunar eclipse, like a lunar eclipse, like a blood moon? or lunar where? Eclipse. Well, because you know, a lunar eclipse where, okay, so a solar eclipse is when is is uh, is when sun the, goes in front of the moon. The moon goes in front of the in front of the sun. Okay, good. Okay. Yeah. Lunar right. eclipse. Lunar, and a lunar eclipse, eclipse is, a is lunar a eclipse is when the earth passes between the sun and the moon. Yeah, yeah, yeah. The the okay, lunar so eclipse is easy compared to because literally you're just we can do a lunar eclipse so easily in a planetarium, you just literally shade the moon red. That's that's all you do. And that's that's all I think that's happening there. No different than the waxing and waning crescents and everything else that's going on the moon. I mean, shading shading the moon red. We can do this in a small environment now. Uh, we could also put your face on there for birthday parties or spell your name on the moon. It's it's not hard. It people that don't believe in like a, a dome structure or you know the or that the moon is still you know two hundred something thousand miles away, they have a tougher time with it. But for me, it's easy. It's like, look, we can do this now in a limited sense. Everything in the sky is possible. You just have to think smaller. That's the that's the thing that most people can't get their head around, is that mm-hmm. it's really compact. Everything is right there. I mean, the moon is tiny. It's tiny. It's it's just up in the sky. That's all it is. It's just that people so, again going from a big universe to a small one. It screws people up. So, do you think? Um, uh, do you think there's a, there's a an edge? Do you think the um like like to say that the Antarctica is actually the the barrier? Antar- yeah, but but Antarctica. In fact, I just had a discussion with somebody about this, which is it's not that the Antarctic coastline. That's where people get screwed up. It's not that the Antarctic coastline is the edge. That's just the beginning of the edge. Remember, that's what Admiral Byrd went to. He hit the Antarctic coastline in 1928, and he was still looking for that thing. He was still looking for the barrier. So if you think of it like a, well, yeah, uh, didn't they didn't they go didn't they go like like five times the distance that it should have taken or something? Oh, like yeah, that? it took them it took them thirty years to find it, and they were using planes all the way. I mean, granted, the planes in the nineteen fifties weren't super great, but they were still good. And so, what the analogy I like to do, use is okay, you take like a um, like a teacup saucer, right? You put it on your uh, on your counter, and then you cover that thing with a giant cake cake covering thing you know like a like a acrylic or there's a huge amount of room between the edge of that saucer and where the cake uh top thing goes like what do they, what do they call it just called it a cake dome there's a big distance right. there so no the edge is right, not yeah. the antarctic coastline that's where everyone everyone starts out with well you're gonna fall off the edge because the edge is you know out where antarctica should be it's like no 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 no. you start with the right coastline. it's like the edge of the, it's like the edge of the pond there you go yeah, the edge of the pond. Yeah. You still got to go inland. In fact, I'm going to steal that, and I own the rights to it, and all its a subsidiary rights. The <laughs> I've said that. Yeah, once you get to, to the edge of the pond, you have to go in uh, upside down salad bowl. Yeah, peanut gallery said that too. Uh, but I like the pond one, where you still have to go inland quite a bit before you actually hit the edge, and that right. takes so so. And you were talking about a very very hostile environment. So by the time you get there. You know, you're, the, the natural reinforcements me, will have turned you back. Let me ask you this. Um, I, I've been thinking about ways of, of, you know, proving or disproving or, or just getting the facts uh, definitively. Uh-huh. Um, uh, one way that I was thinking of was what if, you know, this would take time and money, but uh, what if you flew a plane, uh, you flew a plane exactly along the equator, 
Yep. A, 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 right, all the way around. Right. And then you flew, and then you went to the northern hemisphere of a few degrees. Like yep. Half I, oh, I know where you're going with this. North Pole. And then the, su- yeah, and and the you, south. It, and then you go to the, the southern and do the same thing. You're right. So, you're, and you're if we're in a disc, the southern would be a longer, a bigger radius than, than the right. equator and the northern. You're right. It's a good, that's a good cool. one. The only problem with that, the only problem, and again, I love the idea, is that most pilots would be reliant on the GPS system. And so right, right, remember right. the GPS is, is done by the DOD. So the GPS system is not only going to tell you your route, it's also going to tell you your distance. And yeah, it's going to fudge the numbers. Yeah. It can't, can't be trusted. So anyway, yeah. I hate to do, I hate to do this to you. One more question before I have to let you go because I, there's calls stacking up. What else you got? Oh no, that's cool. That was it? Uh, no, that's cool. Yeah, I love your show, man. Hey, but before I let you go, how long you been? I've been into Flat Earth. I'm going to try to ask that to people. Well, you know, I, uh, I first got exposed to it from Eric DeBay okay. uh, when he was on the Higher Side Chat. And okay. uh, I heard this guy ago. talk, and I was, just, I was just blown away. Nice. Um, you know, the way he spoke and, and the way that he explained it, it just it made so much sense. Right on. Um. But I gotta say, I'm, I'm not fully on board. That's okay. But that's all right. If as long I as you're still in your head, it's cool, man. I am. I'm. I'm trying to prove uh, prove the rounders. You know, not, we all did so, at one point. Yeah, it's okay. Yeah, it, you know. In fact, we may have to do the t-shirts, which I'll own the rights to that as well. <laughs> anyway, you have a good rest of your afternoon, and uh, we'll talk soon. Okay. All right, you too, bro. Thanks. All right, bye-bye. bye bye. All right, we're going to pick up another call right away because they're stacking up. We're going to do 336 and hopefully 215. 336, you are on Live a Strange World right now. You're calling from maybe North Carolina. North Carolina. Are we still debating flat earth at this point in 2017, Mark? We are. Well, oh, you mean like just new people coming in? Well, I mean, as far as the whole argument goes, that they're, they're, and I got to tell you, I haven't talked to you in probably 10 months. Okay. And, um, you well, know, still, I've been still new people parenting. coming in. Oh yeah, oh yeah. yeah. But I, I mean, from my perspective, having done a lot of flying, mm-hmm. um, it boils down to nuts and bolts and mechanics of the thing. And and I sure wish that I was uh, one of these intuitive people that I listen to on your program that that have dreams and they they uh, they somehow know that it's flat and stuff like this. Yeah. I come from it from from a nuts and bolts angle, and and that's aviation. And and the thing that has been, you know, one of the one of the big things that I thought about when I first started considering is the Earth flat. Is you know, how do I sit there in a uh, Boeing triple seven, for instance, for 14 hours in a row during cruise flight, looking at at everything being level? My that is my flight instruments indicating that I'm flying level. Yeah. Um, level pitch, level bank, and so forth. And uh, how can I do this when I'm flying around a ball? Um, yeah. So you've got you've got two things going on here. One is fact, and one is theory, as far as I can see. The fact is, is that I'm sitting there for 14, 15 hours in a row in an airplane with my artificial horizon showing that I'm in level flight, and every other indication is level flight. I can look outside and see level flight. And so that's the factual part. This happens every day. Airplanes flying 100,000 flights, I don't oh, yeah. know, yeah. a week. So this is the fact of it. Now, the theory of it has, has me flying around a ball. Yeah. And um, I don't want to get too deep into this, but I, I just got to say, you know, you, you cannot fly an airliner around a ball. You cannot do this. And and certainly you can't have both of these things happen at once. If yep. if you're flying an airplane around a ball, you can't be sitting there in level flight with all indications being level. It's the two things cannot be happening simultaneously. Yeah. So I think I shared with you back when I first came out as a flat earther uh, last summer. The thing that really hooked me in, and and uh, I got to say, if there's any any aviators listening, you know do some soul searching when it comes to this, because what really hooked me in is the mathematics of the thing. And uh, 
and I shared this with you. I know I did because on a, on a one hour flight, let's say you're flying from uh, uh, Portland, Maine down to JFK. Uh, you're going to do that at probably 37,000 feet or something like that. It's going to take you about an hour. Mm-hmm. <laughs> the earth's curvature is 167,000 feet. Yeah. You, 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 you're going to have, and, and, you're not just going to be dipping your nose down every once in a while. You're in a full-blown descent at, at nearly 3,000 feet per minute in order to fly that curvature. Yeah. So here you go. You're going to have your throttles retarded uh, to idle, if not uh, just above idle, and you're going to have the nose down, and you're definitely in a descent. So there's nothing, uh, nothing subtle about what's going on here if you have to fly around uh, a ball the size that they say that the Earth is. Yeah. So these these two major things. This is my big picture, right? And it always comes back to this: you cannot fly around a ball. You cannot do it. And I know non-aviators are not going to be able to trust me when I say that um, because they haven't sat there for ten thousand hours and and looked out and seen, you know, flight instruments for for you know half of your life. And you know you can, you can't just. I know they can't make sure. that leap of faith. Um, but, uh, you know, given my experience, I got to tell you, the only way that you could fly an airplane around a ball is if you were doing aerobatics, <laughs> that would work. Nice. Yeah. And, the, know, so and I, the... I liken it to flying around the, you know, the longest flight on earth over the earth right now, uh, scheduled to be London, Perth, uh, Qantas is going to do that in an A350 WXB ER. Mm-hmm the long range version airplane. So they they're going to be in the in the seat for 16 hours. This is just their cruise. They're going to be on cruise level flight for 16 hours and they will fly one third around the alleged circumference of the earth. Mm-hmm. And in doing that, at some point you have to realize you're going to have to be inverted. There's no way that you can fly around any one third of a circumference of a sphere and not be inverted. It's it you just can't do it. Yeah. And uh, so that's that's sort of the big picture, and and my God, trying to trying to convey that to uh, to anyone well, is I mean, is I got to tell you, it's impossible, really. <laughs> well, I mean, it's I wouldn't say it's impossible because you know the, the community has grown and grown and grown, but but yeah, it, people yeah. do resist. Absolutely, they do. The the conditioning's thick. So here's a here's a simple thing, mm-hmm. you know, it's a it's an old aviator's axiom: keep the blue side up. That's what you mm-hmm. want to do, right, when you're flying. Keep the blue side up. And then there's a converse relationship to that, which is you want to keep the belly towards the earth. Mm-hmm. Um, most of us don't think of it in that terms, but you want to keep your landing gear facing the earth. So if the blue side up is up and the landing gear is facing the earth, you are going to be flying around the sphere in some majorly unusual attitudes. And, and what I just said about unusual attitudes, I know that the layperson probably won't get it, but if there's any aviators listening to this, they do get it. You, 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 you just can't, you can't fly with these kind of unusual attitudes. You know, the airline pays us big bucks to keep, keep the wings within a certain amount of bank and the pitch with a, a certain amount, um, you know, the up and down pitch. You don't yeah. want to scare the passengers, number one. You know, so, you know, and I'm talking about if you, if you, if you put a model airplane around a basketball and do this, you will see it if you keep the wheels towards the basketball and just run it around that ball. You're going to see very quickly the folly, and and you know I call it folly. I mean, you know, I I was an aviator for for 25 years, and, and yeah. look at we never think about this kind of stuff. This is the furthest thing from our mind. Oh yeah, you know? yeah. They so, all the other pilots and. Unfortunately, we, we, I've, I've got to pick up another call here pretty quick, but I want to mention to you that the other pilots I talked to, they said the same thing, which is that, look, they, they all feel that it's flat when they're up there. But because you're told, you know, since you were a child, that it's a, it's a globe, is this weird paradox going on in your head. It's like, well, you know what? I took off. I landed. Nobody died. That's a good day. And you just, and you just go from there. and. So. Right. You know, we usually we get up to cruise and, and uh, settle in and, and wait for dinner. I mean, yep. you know, yeah. I can't, you know, and you got to kick me off when you got to. But I, I can't begin to tell you how complex the, uh, aero, the, the aerobatics would be in order to fly around a sphere. 
if you're yeah. going to try to do that, I'm going to tell you that the language within the aviation lexicon hasn't even been invented. That's how complex this would be. Yeah. Um, the physics of it have not even haven't have never been discussed. And you know, I mean, you, you know, I flew airline for for several years. Um, you know, I came up in the old school. You know, uh, before all the fancy gadgetry, but. Um, we were never taught this stuff in, in like ground school or anything like that. And, and sure. you know, even going for your airline transport pilot rating, you, you're sort of given a wink and a nod to the fact that, yeah, the earth is round and you got Coriolis effect and all of that. But right. really at the end of the day, when you go to work, none of it enters into it. Agreed. Hey, I hate to do this too big. I, I've got to pick up one more guy before the break so I can keep him through the break. Okay. Love it, man. Take care. But well, thank you. Thank you very much for calling in. L- loved hearing from you. And, and thanks that you came back after all those months. Well, I'm only upset that I didn't get a ticket for the Raleigh event because it's right next door to me. But Go I'm anyway. Alive. Seriously, go anyway. I'm trying to tell people for the Raleigh event at this point, seriously, go go anyway. There's lots of people going to be there and doing stuff outside the main hall. So I'm just saying. We'll see what happens then. Thank okay. you. Okay. See you a bit. Bye-bye. Good night. All right, I'm going to pick up uh, 215 before the break, and we'll talk with them for a little bit and then have them probably stay through the break. Are you still there, 215? Yeah, I'm here. How much, how much time do I got? Uh, you get a minute 30, but I'll keep you through the break if you want to, if you want to go past. All right. What, well, uh, what's going on? Fake. This space is fake. I uh, did the Boston meetup uh, over the weekend. All right. Tell me about it. It was awesome. Thank you for advertising. Happy uh, to do yeah, it. Yeah, it, it was yeah, it was supposed to be pouring, so, you know, we did that backup at Cheers, uh-huh. and, like, uh, the, the first person who showed up, uh, uh, Billy Jo, she, she showed up at Cheers, so she was the first person I met. I charged up my phone in her car, and then, uh, you know, we met up with other people in the park, and then uh, it was nice out all day. Nice. Good. So, yeah, we all got sunburned, actually. <laughs> <laughs> uh, it, so so much for rain. Good good job, Harp. You did a great job. Uh <laughs> But uh, yeah, I, I, I'm willing to stay through the break too. I don't care. But I'll, oh yeah, yeah, uh, let's let's have you stay because awesome. we because we're gonna be we're gonna be going here in just a just a minute or two. Yeah, once I hear the music, um, uh, you know what I mean. Whatever. Uh, well, but I, I just wanted to tell people. everyone. Of, yeah, whatever. yeah, we're, we're going uh, to do anyway. Stay stay with me. Stay with me. I'll pick you up as soon as we get back. Okay. Oh, it's already going. Okay, cool. Yeah, but I'll, I'm gonna mute you, but you'll be three minutes. Okay. Yeah, it's fine. All good. Okay. You're listening to the Truth Frequency Radio Network. No hate, no hype, no, 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 no fear. Welcome back to Strange World with the Truth. It's Alvin, Stranger in Fiction. This is part two of four, and we are still on the line with uh, Space is Fake from Pennsylvania, right? Boston. It's just Boston. a Pennsylvania number. Oh, okay. Yeah. Yeah, I lived, so, in, I lived in PA when I got the number, you know. Yeah, I have a Boulder number, so yeah, I took it with me. So yeah. the the, yeah. the meetup went well at Boston. You were outside. You got sunburned. Uh, good turnout? The yeah, people- so like... Oh. Go ahead. Yeah, there was five of us total, uh, and then we also got a call from Ernest from Framingham while we were doing the meetup, uh, who missed us at the tables. I guess he was a little late. He had to go do something with his wife or something. But uh, anyway, uh, yeah, I, I twelve o'clock comes right, and yeah. I'm late already. So I'm like ten minutes late. So I get to cheers. I'm like, anybody here yet? They're like, what are you talking about? I'm like, <laughs> and uh, and so like then I'm right. I'm like, okay, I better run to the table because it's not raining. So I'm running back and forth, back and forth, and then I, I meet up with uh, 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 Bobby G, uh, Billy Joe, her name is, and uh, yeah. she was the first one there. 
And then this guy, Asana Seal, which is nationalized backwards as his YouTube. We're, we're, we're all kind of small YouTube guys, but then we're all sitting at the table talking for a while, you know, going over everything, talking about you, talking about everyone else, talking about yeah. just whatever, giants and whatever else. And uh, this guy comes up to us and he's like, oh, what's going on over here? And uh, so I was like, oh, well, let me tell you. So I go through, you know, I'm doing my street interviews. That's why I wanted to do all this because I did my street interviews. And those all went well. So I figured, hey, let's all get together. And um, he, he, he's like, so I go through my spiel. And then um, so I get to a point where I'm like, you know, are, are these are, are those tire tracks real? You know, is there, is, there, is there any tire tracks on the lunar? Where's the footage of the unfolding? You know, all that yeah. NASA wise stuff, you know. And, and then he pulls out a flat earth T-shirt. I'm like, what the fuck? Get nice. It turns out it was Jimmy Jedi. And he's been in the scene for a while now. He's been in contact with all of you, I, I believe. Yeah, and, yeah. And yeah. uh, so yeah, he he showed he showed up with his P nine hundred, and uh, he was he recorded a bunch of footage all day while we're all hanging out there. That's and awesome. And then um, yeah, he made he made our uh, little you know we're we are now we have our joined group account on Google, which is also our YouTube F E New England. If anyone wants to subscribe, if you're from the area, we're gonna do another meetup mid July. Uh, and so we're setting up the, the next video for that, uh, tomorrow night at seven or eight or whatever time we decide to do it. Uh, we're going to do a hangout, uh, so we can discuss details of the next meetup. And, um, it's going to be at Castle Island in Boston because it's on a peninsula. Uh, so we can like either do a test and it's right next to the airport as well. And a shipping lane, which is, you know, it's all shipping, uh, you know, ship shipping. Uh, yeah. so that, that's. I figured that would be the best spot to do whatever we want. Right on. And that's awesome. Um, yeah. So we have that. That's our joint account now. And uh, we're, I, we just uploaded some stuff and uh, he's, he, we're doing a more edited version of the whole day. It was a great time. We all hung out there for like good three, what was it? Four o'clock. We left the tables. You know, we went from like, you know, one to four at the yeah, table. Yeah. They usually run pretty burned. long. Yeah, there was five of us there, and then and then like, all right, well now we're FE New England, so let's go have some fun. We decided on the name, and so we went over to a bar and uh, had some drinks, had a good time, talked some more stuff, and uh, it was really great. And I think more people should do this everywhere. Even if you don't have a channel, make a channel. Just do it. Yep. Just go out there and get people in your area because like this, it's that's that's the next step. Is is because eventually we're just gonna you know we'll do days of just street street interviews or like half of us do street interviews, half of us sit at a table with a flat earth sign cool. or, you know, just something that says space is fake, something, something like that. You know, there's a lot of stuff we all want to do and there's a lot of people who are ready to go and now's the time to do it because, uh, uh, you know, they just, NASA just announced they found that alien mummy or whatever. Right. That freaks me right. the hell out. Yeah. Oh my God. They're ready to go with blue, blue beam, blue beams. On I, the know. Way. Like, I know. Oh my goodness. Yeah. No worries, so, man. Keep, now, keep now the, the faith. Thank you. Thank you. And yeah, anyone else out there who wants to do it, I will totally promote it as long as I have time to make the promo. Right. And uh, oh, so yeah, if you and Patricia want to uh, come on our hangout tomorrow, that would be great. I've, I've never really done a hangout before. Uh, so, you know, I don't know how my camera lighting I, is. I will uh, try. It depends. Remember, because she and I have, also have a show tomorrow at uh, 3 o'clock Pacific. Three o'clock Pacific, which tomorrow, is what tomorrow's Eastern. Wednesdays. The Hot Potatoes show, the secret show, it's tomorrow. Yeah. So just what to let you know Eastern? in advance. So, so that'd be like five p.m. Eastern. That Maybe is... after you guys are done, because we're we're gonna do we're gonna do seven p.m. Eastern or eight okay, p.m. Okay, we'll Eastern. send yeah, send the link. Send the link, and we'll yeah, we'll I'll, see I'll what send you an do. email. And yeah, that'd be great. Uh, but yeah, uh, anyone. Uh, who wants to come to the next meetup from the area? Uh, we're going to do it mid July, like the third weekend in July, because everyone can do their fourth or whatever and just have their family and whatever. But uh, cool. yeah, it should be good. Thanks for right, uh, the advertisement. I appreciate all you've done. It's been great. Hey, thank you. Thank you for, for making the first one a success and, and the best of luck for all the future ones to come. All right. Have a good night. All right. You too. Bye bye. All right. All right, we're going to pick up, I think it's Australia. Australia, are you still there hanging on the line? Hey, Mark. It's Mitch from hey. Australia. Hey, what's going on? How are you? You're, you're, I just you're... want to say something about the... Sorry. 
Oh, no, go ahead. I was just going to say, it's always nice talking to you because you're in the future. <laughs> I am. I'm time traveling all the time. I can, I can tell you what's about to happen. Um, <laughs> just, nice. Yeah, just, just, just regarding that other call, uh, the first call, I think it was about the, um, the lunar eclipse. Um, with that, you kind of, you just, you just got to have to look at the, um, the shadow that the actual moon makes because it's about probably half the size of the actual moon. If you actually, if you, if you try and make a shadow of something smaller than the actual size of the object, you're not going to be able to do it. Mm. So yeah, if you look at that from that perspective, if they say how big the moon is compared to how big the shadow is, it just doesn't work out. But yeah, I was yeah. The main reason I was calling is I'm announcing that I'm going to Antarctica. <laughs> Get out of here! You're actually yeah, gonna go yeah, down. Well, and, you're, you're, what, well what, under what not land, not, not land. Well, Qantas is running flights over Antarctica, like twelve-hour flights from mm-hmm. Melbourne and Sydney and everywhere. Yeah, over Antarctica. I think you spend about four hours at, over Antarctica. Um, but that's yeah, not too exciting. But there is a there is a, a flight that I'm going to try and get on the New Year's Eve flight that actually goes from six p.m. to six a.m. So cool. that um, they they claim that you, you you'll be over Antarctica for the midnight sun. So cool. And you also take some pictures. Can, go, are you able to bring a camera? Well, yeah, I've, I've that's why I was going to I've, I've set up a GoFundMe because it's yeah, pretty expensive and and I'm going to yeah try and film the whole thing. And um, yeah, see if the midnight sun actually actually is real or yeah, kind of get some footage of it at least. And right they on. also claim that you go over the um, the magnetic South Pole. So really? I'll, I'll take a couple of comp- yeah. So I'll take a couple of compasses to um to to video if they actually do move if it flips around if you go over the, the South Pole or, or any of that. But yeah. yeah. That is interesting, especially since yeah. there was that um, Australian intelligence agent that I read his statement from last year where he said that it never flips to the South Pole. You know, it's always it, north, north, north. Exactly. And he goes, where he said, where in fact, he was talking to a guy and he goes, he goes, the guy said, no, there is no South Pole. He goes, it should be the opposite. There should be a South Pole. It should flip over because that's the big, it's one of those questions like, when does it go from north to south? And the guy said, it never does. So. Exactly. Yeah, that's that's. So uh, yeah, they they reckon. Yeah, we go over that. So I want to myth bust that and put that to rest to see if That'd it does flip over or if not. So yeah, um, yeah. The GoFundMe is if you look up um flat Earth Antarctic flight, you should find it. It's got cool. all the details. Right on. Uh, um, yeah. If any, anyone wants to email me, uh, my emails Aussies flat two. That's A U S I S F L A T. The number two at hotmail dot com. Right on, and That's and um, yeah, just <laughs> hopefully I can raise the money so I can do it at the end of the year. So yeah, yeah, that'd it, be so awesome. Should be yeah. You if you if you do end up going, I will totally uh, mirror all the footage and maybe put something together for you. Oh yeah, that'd be great. Yeah, I, I gave you an email too just before the show to um to try to uh, pass on to IPS because he's got that um flat earth okay. consortium. I think he is okay. for, for all the um. The Beak, the Beak so, yeah, Legion. That. Yeah. They're very active. <laughs> the Beak. Yeah. All right. Yeah. I'll just, uh, yeah, just um, get on to that. So, yeah. Thanks for the time, Mark. Oh, very, very welcome. And uh, enjoy. I'm sorry. What time is it down there? Um, it's uh, 12.38 p.m. P.m. It's lunchtime. On Wednesday. On the Wednesday. The uh, whatever date is in the future from you right <laughs> 27 all right well enjoy enjoy <laughs> the future and uh, we'll talk soon okay all right see you mark have a good one all right see ya bye bye okay phone number to call in is 720-897-6111 that phone number again is 720-897-6111 and somebody's trying to call in let's see if we can grab them looks like two oh nope 203 was in and then they failed wonder who 203 is 203 has been jumping around 203 if you're listening to me why don't you use the backup number well let's see if he gets in this time because 203 just keeps oh, let's pick him up 203 are you there 203 no nope. <laughs> i don't know if 203 lives in a cave but he has called probably 20 25 times already 
Everybody else is getting through great. But 203, no. They, okay, 203, if you're listening to me, use the backup number. Use 213-233-3998. 213-233-3998. I'll try to pick them up anyway. 203, can you hear me? 203? 203 area code. Nope, I Mark? cannot hear you. Wait, wait, I can't hear something. Mark? Yes. Mark Sargent? Yes. It's Flat Earth Squirrel from Terrafield, Connecticut. How are you? I'm good. <laughs> What what I what happened? I was watching. I, I, you know, I've been, your I've been your number just keeps. Yeah, what happened? Yeah, you know me because I used to call the old three hundred three when you were out in Colorado. Oh right. And that number is not going through anymore. And my wife and I were like, "Where's Mark? Oh my god!" Oh no no no! What and I did? Was, you, yeah, the old number three hundred three four nine four six six three one is actually sitting on my cell phone, which is right next to me, but I'm not forwarding it to the show. Oh, yeah, we, we thought that because you probably got so popular. We were like, my wife and I were like, yeah, he probably just dumps that number. Well, no, I don't <laughs> you know. know like... Here, oh, you don't want to know the reason? Okay, here's the thing. Be- I used to forward it to through through Skype, but Skype, what they did was is they changed their, their – when Microsoft bought Skype, they changed their voicemail to where now you can't put in your own voice for your voicemail. It's a generic – you know, the party you've reached is not available. That that whole thing. I can't actually use my voice anymore. So it's like, oh, screw that. I go, what am I paying for? So I just took I Uh-oh. took that. Yeah. So I still have it. But now I, it goes through my cell phone. So at least people will know that they're getting me instead of a generic robot. Which still could be me. I you see. Know? I yeah. see. That's all right. So you got in, but man, you were but, calling. Uh, yeah, no, I, 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 was just, I was just listening to everything tonight. You know me, Mark, Flatter Squirrel, Connecticut. No. And, you know, I was just listening to the kid from Boston. And I'm actually up in Boston right now. And he was just talking about, you know, his whole meetup thing. Right. And then, you know what? Just like you, Mark, I want to throw my number out there right now. I want the kid to call me. Do my it. number is 203-203-645-3164. And I want that kid from Boston to call me because I'm thinking about starting a startup in Boston and also Connecticut. And please, again, my number is 203-645-3164. Let's get this startup going because we right have MIT, Harvard, all these great universities up here as well. True. Right on. And, Sounds great. Uh, you know what, Mark? Uh, you know, everyone's listening tonight. My wife, my kids are back home in Connecticut, but I'm up here visiting my parents. And it's just uh, it's a great feeling hearing your voice. And uh, Tuesday nights are my favorite nights in the world. I Aww, hope you got a guy from the US, CITRH, and uh, everyone else. I'm always a guy that says, God bless Mark Sargent, but uh, <laughs> love calling in. And, uh, Tonight's show is actually really interesting. You've had some really great callers, Mark. Yeah, yeah. So far, it has been fun, and uh, I'm just honestly, I'm just glad the phone system's working now that I'm I'm going through TFR officially to uh, to use their phones because I was using my own thing and it just was not happening. So thank you, and I hope that if you oh, yeah. do something up you in got... Boston, I hope it works really well for you. Well, yeah. I mean, all we do is we try to spread the word. Um, I mean, dude, you should see how many people are getting onto this flat earth thing, Mark. It's awesome. Uh, I, I know. I know. It's it's fantastic. I, I love the fact that, well, I mean, I'm putting out meetup trailers pretty much every day now. And there's, I mean, how many did I announce during the beginning of the show? Like one, two, three, four, five coming up. One in Niagara Falls, one in Atlanta, one, I don't even know where that one is. Uh, the billboard thing, Patricia's thing in Houston. It's oh yeah, it's crazy the amount of stuff that's coming out. My wife has a question for you. Do you ever sure. get tired, Mark? Do I ever get tired? I'm sure you do. I do. Oh yeah, I get oh, fatigued yeah. like she's anyone so, else. She's, she's probably like Mark Sargent probably gets so tired, and I'm like, you know what? The amount of work this guy does, he probably does. I do, but I pace myself. I don't. I'm not a night owl, so I stay. I don't stay up late. I get up fairly early, but yeah, I'm pretty much just eat, drink, and breathing this stuff uh, on a nonstop basis. Because I need, I need to know what's going on at all times, and so I try to stay on top of it. And 
uh, yeah, but I do I do get a little tired, but it's still so exciting. You know, you get the enthusiasm from all the people that are the, all the new people that are coming in. You get that everyone gets so charged oh, up, God. and it's great. It's great seeing the videos from the new. Oh, we we get excited off you, man. We get excited oh. off of your energy. It's awesome. Well, I, and you know I, what, Mark? To tell you I, the truth, it's the thing at the end of the week or on Tuesdays that you actually like look forward to. Remember the old days with the Brady Bunch or like Bruce <laughs> Company? But now it's like real. Oh, yeah, you know what I'm saying, man. This is I do. awesome, man. You know what? We're, we're, we're coming to a real point in this world where actually you're taking charge. We love you, Mark. Well, thank you. That's again so nice yeah, to hear. And, and and hey, with yeah, that, tell and, you what. And you know what, dude? I'm just a happy go lucky guy, flat out of squirrel from Connecticut. And you know what, dude? We totally support you, man. Right on. And thank you. I I'm, you I'm it, I love love you and love the community. So you have a good rest of your night. And uh, say hi to your yeah, wife you for me and all your and, all your. Uh, fr- as I always say, God bless Mark Sargent, and you're spreading the real truth, and NASA is the snake. <laughs> nice. We love you, Mark. All right. All right. You have Thank a good you, one. Brother. All right. Bye-bye. You too, brother. See ya. All right. Thank you to 203, and we're going to pick up 720 out of Colorado. Let's pick them up, shall we? 720. Sorry you were waiting for Hello, some- Mark. Hey. Hey, Mark, this is Brian from Austin. Actually, I uh, I have a Denver number. Move back. Oh, Austin. that's okay. Anyway, this, this is Brian from Austin. Uh, oh, yeah. Okay, Boulder number. Um, it's Brian. Hey, I've got a, a YouTube channel called The Remnant Report. I've, I've been listening to you for quite some time now, and i got to say I'm absolutely floored. Uh, I'm very, very thankful for the work you're putting out there. Um, I, I have a question for you. I'd like you to try to expand on it. Sure. Um, that I think absolutely proves it beyond a shadow of a doubt. So um, in scripture, the new moon is actually the full moon. It's not the crescent moon that the Babylonian Muslims and all the other Persians and everybody else worships. Okay. The, the full moon is the new moon. And Genesis speaks about in the fourth day of creation, Yahuwah the Most High, after he created the planet, the plants, man, Adam and Hawa, then he created the two lights. And he doesn't say he created planets. He created two lights. And for the sheer purpose of putting light upon the earth to to tell time, dates, and appointed appointed times and seasons. That's what their purpose is, as well as all the other all the other lights in the sky. Yeah, Um, I know without any doubt, no no man has ever stepped foot on on the moon. That's a big facade. But uh, if you could expand, because I think uh, one, I I just I. I respect your knowledge and the the time that you put into it, but could you expand a little bit when there is a full moon and I'm standing in Austin, Texas, and I can look out and see a full moon, right? Yeah. The second that full moon, and it's the only time, right? The two luminaries are the two witnesses. The only time there's a full moon, they are on opposite sides of, of the, of the, uh, of the plane as I'll put it. Right. Yep. So the second that the second that full moon comes up, that that sun basically goes below. It's the only time, right? Mm-hmm. It can't be a full moon any other way. So when I'm standing there watching it, and I can see that moon is, or I can see the sun, the moon should be on. If I was on a globe, a spinning globe, like the fraud says, that mm-hmm. sun, that moon should be on the other side of the planet, basically over Australia, from what I understand. Is that correct? Um, if we were on a spinning globe, I know yeah, we're not, but it, are you just, following me? Yeah, I am. I am. I unfortunately trying to do a 3d visual on a radio show is going to be real tough, but okay. there have been, you're not the first person to, to have brought this up. There's been a whole bunch of videos of people that have been trying to, in fact, I'm hoping that some, some people will finally do some weather balloon shots. That was the first one that caught my eye which was, for example, there was a, a night weather balloon that came up that showed just a few frames where the moon shouldn't have been in the sky because it was coming up over Arizona. And if you looked right. at the world map, right. it should have been completely on the other side of the globe. And yet right. you didn't see it from the ground. And it's like, well, wait, this weather balloon's only up 20 miles. There's no way it should be able to see uh, you know, the moon on the other side of the world. So it, It's impossible. 
Yeah, it, w- it there, would be impossible. Yeah, yeah. There's there's definitely some things wrong when it comes to the sky, but the sky has always been. I think there's been some hints, if you believe in in perfect creation. I believe some hints were put in the sky for us. You know, no different than the moon showing only one side of itself to us. It right. never changes, right. even a fraction of a degree. You know, the, that that coincidence, right. or that the moon fits exactly in front of the sun, and you say, well, it's because it's 400 times narrower than the sun. It's like, and it's exactly 400 <laughs> times farther away. You know, the, the sun being <laughs> farther than the moon. There's, there's a bunch of cool little clues and coincidences, which I think were left for our benefit. But yeah, I, I absolutely, I absolutely agree with you that the sun and the moon were put in the sky for timekeeping and for inspiration and all the other fun stuff. Because let's face it, um, a sky that just gets lighter and darker with with nothing else that's kind of boring. You know, there's you know people look yep. up all the time and look look at all the influence that the sun and the moon had. So, well, uh, exactly. So if you'll bear with me one second, let me just read it. Sure. So in, in scripture, in Bereshith in the Hebrew, Genesis is a pagan deity, if you don't know that, but a Bereshith in Hebrew, uh, Bereshith 1, oh, let's see, Bereshith 1, 14, if you don't mind, I'm just going to read go for ahead, a second. Go ahead, go ahead, go ahead. And Elohim said, let lights come to be in the expanse of the heavens to separate the day from the night and let them be for signs and appointed times and for days and years. That was the purpose of the lights. I'll repeat it. Let lights come to be in the expanse of the heavens, actually Shamayim, to separate the day from the night and let them be for signs and appointed times and for days and years. There's the four purposes. Signs, appointed times. Now go to now go to Revelation twelve. What is John speaking of when he was exiled to Patmos? Right. He was sitting on Patmos, worshiping just like he's supposed to do and facing east, like all good Hebrews would do, not the Jew Khazars. Right. Yeah. Yeah. Focusing on the east. And what did he see? He saw the virgin, uh, the, the virgin deal come up and what is right at its foot. So here's a question. Mm-hmm. This is this is this is what unraveled it all for me, because I asked, how do we know what day is New Year's? And what have we been told, right? We've been told it was the summer solstice or one of the solstices, right? Yeah. Who yeah. created that? The Pope, Man. the Catholic yeah. Roman Pope. So it's a religious doctrine. It's not based on fact. I'll go to a second thing. So uh, make it make it out, fairly quick though, because we're we're running out of time. You, you bet. You you bet. You bet. So if the if the Creator, the Most High, whatever you want, you know, whatever. Not going to debate all that. If he uh-huh. created all these things prior to the sun and the moon, right? Uh-huh. In in Bereshith 116, and Elohim made two great lights, the great the greater light to rule the day, the lesser light to rule the night and the stars. Yep. And Elohim said, Let them be in the expanse of the heavens to give light on the earth and to rule over the day and over the night and to separate the light from the darkness. And Elohim saw that it was good. So okay. here's my question. If he created all, right. all these other things, there's there's proof right there that they're not planets. They're lights. For yep. one, for the four purposes he said, for signs, appointed times, days, and years. It's simple. Here's my last point, and then I'll hop off. Okay. When Messiah Yahushua returns, right? When mm-hmm. the Messiah, if you believe it or not, that's not the point. Mm-hmm. When he returns and he says, every eye will see him. How is that possible if we're it's on, only a possible on a flat only possible in a flat plane. Absolutely. Can't Bingo, see it on my globe. brother. Hallelujah. Yep. All right. Have a good one. So if I, if, you bet. Okay. Hallelujah. All right. Bye-bye. All right. We're going to pick up one more just before we go to break. And we're going to keep him through the break. Uh, 914, are you still there? We're going to keep you through the break. 914, New York. Can you hear me? New York. Oh, yeah, yeah. I got you. I got you here. Okay, um, you can talk for about, uh, well, where where are you calling from first? Oh, come on, this is CC over here. How you doing, Mark? Oh, well, I don't know all the numbers by heart. Oh, I thought you did. Okay, oh, this is Chris. Oh, good Lord, Chris, no. Well, no, because I don't, I don't get, call, caller ID doesn't come through here. We're going to go to break, so you're going to have to wait three minutes. Oh, okay? it doesn't, okay. No, not a problem, I'll wait. Okay, stay there.
Welcome back to Strange World, part three of four. We're doing calls. Phone number to call in is 720-897-6111. That is 720-897-6111. And if you can't reach me through that number, I'll give you a backup number. But so far, everybody's coming in just fine. As a matter of fact, just before the break, picked up somebody else, which was this guy, the guy just unmuted just now. Hey, what's going on? (laughs) Hey, Mark, great show so far, I'll tell you. Thanks. Excellent. Um, actually, had to leave the house because I'm trying to hide. Because <laughs> <Anyway, laughs> you're not allowed to see. talk about flat Earth inside okay. the house. Uh, well, I'm not really quite sure yet, but I'll tell you. So far, the great, great show. You know, this oh. is Christopher from New York, Westchester County, of course. Nine one four area code. <laughs> we shout out to uh, eight four five. 203, I'll definitely contact him about a, what was that? He was trying to put together, you know, a live meetup. That's great. Yeah. 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 Meetup. Yeah. That's terrific. Nice. Cool. So how you doing? <laughs> You're like hiding in the bushes right now, aren't you? <laughs> yeah, I am. <laughs> <laughs> So you're there, like, hiding underneath the deck of a neighbor's porch. <laughs> Isn't it embarrassing how bad it's gotten? I mean, it's uh-huh. ridiculous. I tried to do my video cam today with uh, with people live out on the street. They wouldn't even, they wouldn't let me record them at all. Wow. Yeah, some people, they just react, you know, they're, they get a little... Again, it's the most polarizing topic I've ever seen ever no topic i you, you seriously i challenge anybody out there i don't care what you know gay rights black rights women's rights abortion stem cells take your pick nothing gets people as hot as flat earth which sounds so simple and stupid and ridiculous and yet you know people get that glazed over i in fact if i hear i'm not i can't say it on the air because it's a family show sort of but you know when i you know you, yeah, yeah, sure. you say flat earth and they go you know bs you know, they'll, I mean, it's they're like, a, that's the knee jerk reaction. It's like, they just, you know, they just call it right there. They're BS. No way. <laughs> can't be, can't be. It's like, well, can't it? But, but that's the whole Neo thing. When Neo, even though Lawrence Fishburne in the first matrix laid it out to him real slow and gentle, like of the history of how things went, when he finally got to that point where it's like, oh yeah, by the way, you're, you're actually yeah. sitting in a pod being used as a human battery. He freaked out. And he's a computer guy. You know, he probably played games. He knows what po- the potential of alternate realities, and he couldn't take it. He got out swinging. And, uh, so. You know, the bad thing about it is that, you know, I put an intro out there to, to a video that I'm about to, you know, make, and then I can't even show people the reaction of, you know, what they, what they see with these pictures from NASA, yeah. from all these other places that... <laughs> We've been fed for, I mean, how long now? 50 years. Uh, about 60 years now, but yeah. Yeah, 60. Yeah. Well, I'm going to work on it. Yeah. I'm going back out tomorrow. Good. Good for you. I Again, what? why not? But, you got nothing to lose, technically. And, and, and remember, everybody, everybody, the, the, the reactions you see are the same reactions that a lot of the people in the community had when they first started. Uh, even me. 
Uh, except uh, I didn't, I didn't, I didn't have anybody to yell at. Yeah, I know exactly. I mean, same with me too. You know, I mean, we were all in the same boat, but yeah. you finally wake up and, and here you are. But yeah. I'll tell you, you know, the lunar eclipse, the uh, solar eclipse is coming up in August. Right. Right. There's going to be a lot of people it. shooting that with probably different P900s, and hopefully some people will be able to do it from airplanes, and that'll be cool. But it'll probably be quite uh, a bit of drone footage. I hope, really neat. I hope we get a lot of good footage and we can break it down. Maybe we can find something. Got so much else to talk about with you, but you know, I can't take up your time, but... Uh... Oh, that's all right. That's cool, man. Yeah. Well, um, I, you know, don't don't. By the way, don't jeopardize any relationships you have. <laughs> just just because you want to. Oh wanna well, no, of course not. <laughs> no, I'm going to gradually like, bring that, that up. Okay. <laughs> no, no, no. You see, now that that's a good point. You know, and and next that this is going out to everybody out there right now. Um, if you don't have somebody who has an open mind. You know, uh, you know, the, the best way to bring it up is sort of off how you know, NASA. Right. Yeah. Yeah. The, the best. Well, you have to tear it down. I mean, NASA. I think so. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, Darren Nesbitt, it's, the guy from London, he was the put together some of those great podium speeches and NASA, you have to attack first. Of course, it was easier for him because he was in England where they don't even have a space program. But. That, oh yeah! Oh it, really? Okay, I didn't know that. No. Yeah, but if they, yeah, it's weird. You know, one England stayed out of the space race, and I think they knew. And uh, they, they, I think they Smart. were like, you know what? <laughs> you guys can spend all the money you want on this. We're not gonna, we're not gonna touch it because it, you're, you're blowing a lot of federal money on it. And they stayed out, and I, and I think they took the shot again. You want to have some fun? Look up the James Bond movie with Sean Connery. Diamonds are forever. When he runs through the uh, fake moon landing set uh, movie set for no apparent reason. And when the, yeah, when the astronauts funny. were trying to chase him, they couldn't catch him because they had to stay in character and move in slow motion. It was brilliant. Yeah. I've seen that. I've seen that cut on a lot of uh, YouTube videos too. I mean, that is really a funny scene too. Yeah. You know, I forgot about that, you know, we're watching it way back in the day, but, but yeah, yeah you, you know, I'll tell you, Mark, you're doing a great job here. Well, thank you. This is a terrific show. Uh, you know, right, right from the beginning, you got an air, airline pilot right over there. And he's absolutely true. There's no way that a, that a plane could fly over uh, a, a globe. globe, you know, yeah. I mean, with these well, air, I mean, this just, it's, it's not possible. Yeah. The constant descent, I hadn't really thought of that much, which is, you know, yeah, if you're, if you have to descend 116,000 feet, you're basically going to be on a constant state of descent. It takes a long time absolutely. to descend even 30,000 feet. Let alone one hundred sixteen thousand feet. These, so, yeah, you know these these planes have great computers and and all this other nonsense and these gadgets, but unfortunately, they're not going to, you know, I, I mean, from each uh, what is that? I, you know, you've got so much going on over there in terms right. of the curvature that these I planes know. are going to constantly have to be corrected. I, and absolutely. they're not. They're not. They're just flying in a straight line. You know, yeah. So. Yeah. Anybody out there who's getting on a plane going to Spain? Europe, or whatever. <laughs> <You know? laughs> yeah, yeah. Then I hate to say case, get a leveler. I mean, that's just boring. Uh, I mean, the the tests that the people are pulling out now are pretty cool. You know, the uh, was the accelerometer mm -hmm. and the spirit level and all the other fun stuff. We're gonna we're gonna get it eventually. We're just compiling more and more things. And science, unfortunately, they don't have anything to come back with. So, with the exception of Neil deGrasse Tyson's, no, they don't astronomy book for for beginners and bill nye of course saving the world in his <laughs> netflix show which i doubt is going to get picked up for a second season no nah, yeah i doubt it too and i mean it's a complete joke a disaster um you know the, the one main question is you know i mean i have a seven-year-old daughter myself and and it really is I, this is a long story and i can't get into it but i'm going to just do a, a a thesis on it very quickly okay. Okay. um uh, parents that are uh, parents that are out there right now um, that have to teach their kids this nonsense that they have to learn that we've all learned itself. Don't mm -hmm. feel guilty. All right, you have to do it, and it's just part of the entire system. When they get older, you will teach them the way to go. Yeah, yeah, I agree. I they, well, heck, say, there was, there was a, a six-year-old six-year-old girl that did a flat Earth video uh, just uh, yesterday, oh, yeah. two days ago. And I'm thinking about mirroring it on my channel. I mean, yeah, she's telling her brother, who I think is like nine, 
is is the one that's you know yeah, he's, yeah, he's the one yeah. coaching her but i'm going yeah you know if a nine-year-old and a six-year-old are making a flat earth video i think we've got a we're re- <laughs> resonating pretty good on on demographics right now so well I, unfortunately in westchester county i as you said i think i will be locked away in a stranger racket if i if i can bring that up no, hopefully <laughs> not uh, hopefully and if you do yeah. I, if something happens wait, it hasn't happened to anybody yet but if it does happen We'll, we're going to cover the hell out of it. And it's a great news story. So don't, don't worry about oh, that. It absolutely you, is. You know, because at, at our, some point, somebody local... is going to get drugged in, drag, I'm sorry, going to get drug into a psychiatric evaluation. And I, honestly, I hope I'm absolutely. one of them. Because it's like, okay. Are you, <laughs> you know, you're right about that. Yeah. You know? It's like, I no. hope we're in the same room or right together. Yeah. <laughs> That's nice. what I'm hoping. All right. Anyway, I, I'm going to grab some gonna, of the calls. Say, you, have, you have fun. To, uh, crawl from underneath the deck that you're hiding, and uh, we'll, uh, we'll we'll talk again soon. Maybe ne- maybe next time you can call from a roof or something. Oh, don't make me feel that bad. Oh my god, <laughs> that's bad, isn't it? All right, thank you, thank you, Mark. I appreciate your uh, your All pickup right. on that. All right, have a good one. Bye. I'll say it. All right, phone number to call in is 720-897-6111. That is 720-897-6111. And let's do the backup number, just because somebody keeps blinking off and on. I don't know. I think it was 61. Who the heck is blinking off and on over here? Uh, One second. This is 612. Whoever 612 is, I'll give out the backup number just for the heck of it. It is 213-233-3998. That is 213-233-3998. And there's 443. Nope. Nope, they were on. Now they're gone. So let's try 443 again. I don't know what is what they are doing. Okay, nope. <laughs> I can see a pop-up on the screen. and these They just vaporize, which is fine. All right, remember the remember the backup number, guys. 213-233-3998. 213-233-3998. Okay, let's do 443. 443 area code. Are you there? Hey. 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 Okay. Yeah, I, All right. yeah, I give you more I'm than hey. Now. What? <laughs> Hello? Hey. Can you hear me? Yeah. Okay. All right. There we go. What are we talking about? <laughs> I was just trying to get through. I, I heard you saying some other number, and then it cut off, and then it cut off again, and then I got through. All right. That's all right. You made it through. That's cool. Anyway, I, I got you. Right. I got you. Yeah. Yeah. Hey. Yeah. There's a lot of stuff tonight that was very awesome. I was yeah. Sure. Yeah. And, uh, yeah, and um, uh, oh, how you doing? This is not your first time you've called in, right? No, it's not. It's not. What's what's going on? Not. Are you you're not hiding but underneath the deck as well? Are you? Oh, uh, <laughs> I might be. I might be. I might be outside. <laughs> you know, I get a lot of that from people. <laughs> They're like, now some people just go outside to smoke, but other people are like, "Yeah, I can't talk about this in the house." It, uh, it I mean, it, it it's, that's well. what it's come to. Unfortunately. Yeah, the, the wife, actually, yeah. I can see her like grabbing like a full size rolling pin and she's like <laughs> smacking it in her hand going, I will leave you. What the, what, what the hell is wrong with you? <laughs> but yeah. That's so cool. uh, anyway, I wanted to just throw like an alternate theory out there about, uh, when the earth, it's between the sun and the moon and everything. Do it. What it uh, is, everything is flat in some sort of way. Like the moon and the sun, I've seen so many videos of just things that disprove that this sun is a star, a huge, magnificent thing. Yeah. But in reality, it's just a little bit, it's just light. And so what's to say it's not a hologram completely? 
True. It just yeah. emits this radiant I'm, light. I'm not going to discount and it. I, I also okay. Now I now I remember the main reason why I called you. I want to talk about the guy who wants to, <laughs> who brings religion into it for uh-huh. people who are in. To flat Earth, if you have family members, I wouldn't recommend bringing religion into it immediately. Well, because I mean, if it's a wall, because it turns people away. It can potentially, mm-hmm. sure. If they're well, well it depends for if they're if not who's not religious. Yes, they are religious. Yeah. Go ahead, but if not, try not to quote anything religious when you're first explaining why it yeah. is alive. Yeah, and well, because then you're hitting them with a double whammy. Don't bring... Yeah, that's what I'm saying. Yeah, all right. You know? That's fair. I'm right. sorry, got me up. <laughs> it took me a while to get there. That, but, that's okay, man. It's, it's cool. Unfortunately, I've got three calls stacked up behind you, so... Um, do you want to do any shout outs or anything? Yeah. Cause I want to get in. Hey, um, uh, well, uh, um, anybody what? down in the Gulf coast area, let me know. Do you want to, do you want to give out your phone number? Shout it out. No. <laughs> How about your email? No, but <laughs> if anybody's down here, I will. Well, how are they going to get a hold of you? Uh, uh, or are they just, or just basically somebody I've, should, I've should host a you, meetup? I've emailed you a few times. I've emailed you a few times, but I'll email you again. Okay, well, right now, I haven't seen any Gulf Coast people yet, although I've done, what, Florida, Houston, a couple in Texas, Seattle, Canada. Uh, Florida's a huge state. <laughs> yeah, Florida's <laughs> I mean, a big state. It's like, well, there's one in, there's one in mean, Jacksonville like, on the 1st. Okay. I'm just saying. Uh, there's, look, hours, I have to type, but... type in... Type in meet up Jacksonville. I, I feel of, like somebody will pop up somewhere in the Oh I know. But I'm just saying if you want one New quick, Orleans, you want instant, New Orleans. If you want yeah. instant gratifications, New Orleans is a good idea. I agree. I'm just saying that there's one in Jacksonville gonna be on the first. In fact, uh, you've been exposed, uh, one of the bigger flat earth channels. He is gonna be there, from what I understand. Well, um, just to let you, the first of July. Yeah, first of July. Just type in you know what? You can just look at my channel. Just go to my channel, Mark Sargent, and you will see all the meetups that are that are currently yeah, active. Okay. But I know for a fact there's all one right, in Jacksonville oh. coming up. That's the closest right. one to you Wait that I got at the moment. All right. Well, anybody anybody that wants to get closer, please come on. <laughs> <laughs> nice. I'm sorry, I, I, have, I gotta you know I gotta go. I, mean? but I will talk to you soon. Okay. All right. Later. All right. Yeah. See ya. Right. Say hi to the wife. <laughs> All right, so let's pick up. We got the choice now. Let's pick up uh, New York. How about Mark from New York? Mark from New York, you have been unmuted and are available to speak. <laughs> hey, Mark, it's Mark. How are you? Yeah, you always say that. You, I know who it is. I know, I know. I know, but other people don't, so I That's figured I might as true. well. All right. Mark, Mark is actually naked as we speak. And, yeah, uh, I'm hiding under my back porch. This has been an interesting of, night. Yeah, a lot of people do that. Uh, that they're they uh, you know, they just can't talk about it in the house. Other people try to drag you know the family into it. It's like, oh no, dad's calling the radio. Uh huh. He he does that. He watches me. He's like, oh my. I mean, <laughs> she's okay with it, I guess. You know. She she listens to the show. She likes your voice. She oh. she, she could she could listen to you for a long time talking. Oh, that's nice. Did um did hey did that police officer ever call you? No, you? I'm sorry. I'm a dumbass. I have been so busy with work. I haven't even emailed him yet. Dude, I'm so crazy. Email him. I know. I know. I. I'm doing it right now as we all speak. Right, all right. It's I've not often been... that NYPD is, you know. Doing yeah, and it'd be stuff. funny if he like works works with my brother or some shit. I'd be crazy. Wouldn't that be hilarious? Yeah. Yeah, yeah. So, I'd be like, what the hell? Like, seriously, you guys. Yeah, could, it, I mean, if, you, if some happened, I mean, you guys could drive down together. Technically, I, I wouldn't be surprised if honestly, if he's down there, I wouldn't be surprised if he lives somewhere up here. A lot of them, you know, they live outside the city. 
Right on. Yeah, definitely. Because I I shot him your thing, and uh, I know yeah. I know. Was no, I, oh, he didn't email me. I don't think. I don't know. I, no, you he know. Email you. I, no, I no. I, I, I sent I'm sorry. To, I sent the email to you. Yes. No, I have his. I'll I'll email him tonight. I'm sorry. I just I, I don't have to apologize. So easy with You're my work. I, well, I'm I'm mad because I want to meet up with people, and it's just I, I've been so I, overwhelmed I with you. work and life. It's okay. It sucks. Hey, I, I, hey, you know what I did to my Chrysler? Uh, my three hundred. I hopefully not wrecked it. No, 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 no. I wouldn't have said it that way. I wouldn't cry. You did. No, you I didn't got it closer sense. to the flat earth. I you dropped what? it two inches. I I slammed oh, it to the God. ground and dropped it. I lowered it. I love it. Oh my God, it's such a different car. Oh, oh my God, it's a it's it's a completely different car. I was out driving it like a maniac. I was like, "Holy shit!" Well, I'll be it, careful. It's nine. No, be I careful. know, I know. I, 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 it was just the first time, you know. Just kind oh, of no, all no, together. The same speed bumps are a pain in the ass for lowriders. Oh yeah, 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 definitely, I think definitely. I destroyed. Real short story for you. I destroyed the muffler system and punched a hole in the tranny of my '77 Monte Carlo, which I bought low ride. It was a low rider, but I lived up in the northwest and you have to take ferries and when it was low tide uh, it's kind of like this this kind of a crest and i high centered it and had to punch it just to get it over it and tore a hole in the muffler and then punched a hole in the tranny and it was awful it's terrible yeah but uh, just be careful yeah. if you're gonna do no, it. I, know. I love low riders love them uh monte carlos 300s the old mercuries love low riders but uh, yeah just, just well the 86 I have is lowered, and I used to have a uh, a 96 B body Caprice cop car. Okay. I slammed that to the ground. That thing that thing was a lot of fun. Low rider cop car, nice. Yeah, it was cool, and and it was hysterical because they thought it was one of you know they thought it was one of theirs. You know, people would wave to me all the time, and like even my wife, she she would drive it into work, and where she works is. The sheriff, you know, the sheriff's department always in and out of her her building, and they'd see her and wave to her and stuff. It was funny, and I'm like, but they didn't notice it was slammed to the ground because <laughs> it looked like a cop car, but it was slammed to the ground. Nice, nice. Yeah, too funny. Cool. Oh man, I got. I, where's my uh, quote? Oh, you got a quote from Peanut Gallery. Uh, oh yeah, yes I do, and only and this one is just because I don't know. A little bit of drama, more drama this weekend, and I'm just getting sick of it. But yeah, it's love all, mm-hmm. trust a few, do wrong to none. And nice. that's William Shakespeare. And that's I, and good. I, I just stumbled across it. And I was like, huh, I like that. I think that's a very good thing. You that's know, nice. We should. You know, like everybody... That. We're together. We're on the same side. I know I kumbaya and, you know, let's go outside and hug a tree. But, you know, it, it, it truly is. We're really he, on um, the same damn side. He counters with his own quote and says, uh, I go hate, to hell, right? <laughs> I hate art from New York. That's from the peanut gallery. Yeah. No, he actually didn't write he, he, he didn't write that, actually. I just made that up. And his actual quote says, I never want you to quote me citing my authority as a scientist for you're knowing something. If that's what you have to resort to, I have failed as an educator. And who said that? But NDT. Really? Yeah. But he's such an arrogant son of a bitch. I would think he wants everyone to be that way. Uh, His days of sipping fine wine, which is one of his hobbies, is coming to a close. So, um, i I give you another minute, then i got to pick up, unfortunately, you know who's right behind you is No problem. Uh, any any other oh, things? Cool, cool. Yeah, I absolutely agree. By the way, the the drama, like it's always going to be there for some reason. The flatters community, yeah, 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 is, yeah. yeah. I, but we're you know the the most of the people are staying above it, so it's okay. Yeah, then, uh, I guess I'll counterman it with there are good people, and I'm lucky to be friend. I'm very honored to be friends with a lot of these people because they're good people. You know, we've got been talking for a long time and. I don't care what you say. We're friends. I mean, we know each other's family lives. We know each other, you know, hey, how's your kid doing? And this and 
you know, and they're good people, and I'm very, yeah. very happy to have them. Yeah, yeah. No, the Flyers yeah. community still is still great. All we need is a common enemy, and then it'll be awesome, and no one will be able to stop us. So I'm not, uh, yeah. I'm not too. Well, Project Blue Beam. Oh right? God! If, you know, if that if they fire that thing Crazy. up before I, the conference, I, I, I'm going to be so ticked. What was that? An alien mummy? I didn't even hear it. Uh, I don't I, listen to I, any I, news or nothing. I missed that one. It, just I look that up. Just keep an eye out. You'll know when it happens. If it, I'm seriously though. Right, if right, it right. Happens, I mean, really, before I, I finish any of my stuff for the, I mean, I'm really looking forward to this conference thing. So. I know, oh, but, and it'll suck because I won't get a refund. <laughs> <laughs> Funny. Well, well, in the hotel, they won't even bill it. But yeah, you'll lose your. You lose right, your right, 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 right. Although no, you'll, have, you'll have, you'll yeah, have, you'll you'll have the receipt anyway for it. <laughs> yeah, that's true. You'll say I, I was there and, for the blue beam thing. And frame and it. The, all the fake I'm, aliens showed up. Yeah. All right. Oh, anyway, I got, I got, I got one more quote. Got one, all right, one more quote, real quick, and this is yeah. for the the ballers a fool thinks himself to be wise but a wise man knows himself to be a fool and that and i think that applies to just that uh, cognitive dissonance you have to really really be objective when you look at this stuff and not Agreed. just Absolutely. automatically dismiss it all, all right, right. Man. have fun keep right. up the good work you're the man um Thanks. tell wes i'm going to start up a hangout and uh, <laughs> i'll invite him okay see you man <laughs> All righty. Bye bye. Bye bye. Wes, if you're there, stay through the break. Oh my God, that's so funny. All right, y'all yeah, stay. No hate, no hype. No fear. We are EFR. Your protection from, from deception. sync this song that's the weird part well welcome back to strange world part four of four this is the last one and we got two people one person in line one person holding i'll take the person off mute in a second and yes that was joe jackson i was gonna say it step it out from his album night and day all right Let's take off mute on this chucklehead. All right. It's probably Wes. Hey, from... Mark. Yeah. Well, right. I, I love the way your tone changes. Every time I call in, his tone changes. Wes. Oh, this Jeez. guy. Uh, yeah, all I mean, right. You know what? what? <laughs> I give you kudos. I love the green room. That's pretty cool. Put us in the green room. Isn't that kind of cool? The, uh, yeah, 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 you know, I was sitting there. You know, there's a lot of stars in the green room too, because you know Peter Falk was in there, and I was I was doing an impression. I was doing it uh, seriously. I was doing an impression of him, and he turned around, looked at me with one eye, and said, "Excuse me, how do you do that with your eye?" So yeah, it was pretty cool. Wow. Okay, first off, the, the fact that you did a Peter Falk impression, that's that's pretty good. I tried. Yeah. By the way, I tomorrow. Tried. For you guys, because I want to. Well, that, the, the funny thing is, Mark. The funny thing is, Mark. I can actually do the eye, and if you see me on a hangout, it's freaky. Yeah, right. I, I don't. I don't want to really see that, though. That, that would be. <laughs> I don't. I don't think I would in, enjoy that. Uh, let's see here. By the way, there's a quote from the Peanut Gallery: "Experience is a comb which nature gives to men when they are bald." <laughs> that is a oh, Chinese. God. Thank you so much. Peanut gallery, thank you. That is a Chinese <laughs> pro- proverb. <laughs> yes, and he picked that out just for you and me. I think oh, I wow. have less hair than you do. Uh, I got a little bit of hair. The, my problem is, though, is my head is so big that I actually have quite a bit of hair, but my head is so big that it doesn't look like it covers much of it. 
I've got a I've got a size eight good, plus. Good plus. excuse. I love no, that. It's true. Oh, I'm use it's that. Absolutely true. I'm use no, that. I, when I look in the mirror, I'm looking at a certain angle. Things actually look pretty good. When I look at photographs, it's like, oh my god, where were you taking that photograph? So because I'm taller than a lot of people, they they you know people that right. are taller than me, yeah. Anyway. What are you? You're like what six six three or something? Uh, six two. Six two. Okay, you're an inch taller than I am. Same thing go. with Mark from New York. I think he's I think he's six one too. Oh, cool. So anyway, what uh, no, what's just, what's on your mind? Oh God. <laughs> oh, that was the wrong thing to ask. There's a lot of stuff on my mind. No, I was just uh thinking about uh Jacob Israel. I don't know if you watch his show or not. Jacob's ladder. Um uh, not regularly. Oh, okay. But anyhow, uh Great channel. Uh, I, I love his voice uh, since I'm really into a lot of impressions and stuff. And I could just see Jacob doing doing a show about Mark Sargent. And Would I, could, I could just an see him. impression of me? No, 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 no. Uh, me doing an impression of him talking about you. <laughs> that is going on levels that I am having a hard time trying to visualize. Well, this is what it would kind of sound like. Oh, God. Jacob Israel here. Hi, and how are you guys all doing? Today, we got a great show. We're going to do, we're going to look into Mark Sargent's brain and see what's in there. Let's go there, shall we? Nothing but movies. That's it. Nothing but movies. Okay. <laughs> nice. That's and it. I do watch a ton of movies. I, I try to yes, keep up do. on just about everything I can. Television shows, again, not as much, but... Uh, a lot of movies. Well, I get so many great references from them, and and they teach me a lot. Oh yeah, Seriously? movies are, are. I mean, they're I hate... all telling. Go I think ahead. they're telling us the truth. A lot of them. I think they're telling us the truth. I do they're too. Really do. Yeah. yeah, yeah. I'm I'm a big Absolutely. believer. It's they're my. Uh, I I hate bad writing, and I adore good writing. Right. So, Definitely. Yeah. Uh, all right. Any... Well. Anything else you want to? No, I got, I got nothing. I got nothing. I say hello <laughs> to all my buddies out there. You know, I, I was trying to think of what I forgot about last week. Still can't think of it. Taking me. Well, you're not going to find it now. No, it's gone. It's gone. Totally it's, gone. it's in the rearview mirror a long way back there, man. I don't think you're going to. Yeah. Yeah. yeah when you well, get thank you, though. 50, and by the way, you come five, in actually you know? as you. Your, your caller yeah, ID actually do. comes in. No fooling. It actually says my name. Oh, that's yeah. awesome. well. You, I sent you my number, so you probably added it. Well, uh, no, I didn't. Well, I didn't add it to the TFR call board. Oh, okay. Wow, that is awesome. Oh, cool. So it's so it's actually coming. I feel, in. I feel special. I feel real special now. Yeah. Yeah, <laughs> and and I'm well. Uh, I, you know, there's a little. No, no. See, the 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 drone strike tick is not checked. So you apparently are yeah. going to be around for at least another week. Actually, the DOD is on my ass, and they're just like, yeah, that's him. They'll be cutting <laughs> me off. Remember my last cell phone? They cut me off at TFR. <laughs> oh, I couldn't believe it. It's all right, man. All right, Don't man. Worry. Well, you take I'll, care. I'll put in the good and, word. Uh, what's that? Well, I'll put in the good word for you. All right. <laughs> all right. Tell them that I'm still waiting for my check. Okay. <laughs> I'll All talk right. to you later. All right. Bye-bye. Bye. All right. We're going to pick up 479. He has been hanging out for a while in the green room, and I'm going to call it the green room from now on, even though I've never actually been in a green room. Uh, 479, are you there? I am. What's going on? Hello, Mark. Hey. Uh, well, uh, you know, it's funny because I actually found your videos, I think, like the fourth clue in like way back when. Um, right on. But I've actually kind of I was probably a flat earther for like a year, and then I started getting abducted by aliens, and I was wondering what you thought about alien abduction, considering all this. I all right, I've got mixed opinion on on the whole alien abduction thing now, because now I, even though I believe no, I mean you probably if you've heard my stuff look I mean I can go out with night vision binoculars and watch stuff flying around the sky all night long anywhere you know whether it's here whether it's Canada whether it's Colorado 
I, you know, it's all, always the same sort of stuff that's up there. But what I don't think they are is beings from Mars and Jupiter and Venus and Saturn and that. I Now, could they possibly be from other versions of us? Sure. Or are they previous versions of us? Sure. Do they have high-tech uh, aircraft? Yeah, you, you bet. In fact, I don't even think I call them spacecraft anymore. Do, can they pick off people from time to time? In various places like the woods or a beach or out in a boat or, you know, somewhere remote. Yes. But I also think there's protocols in effect where they just can't land in Maple Street anywhere and, and, you know, get out and take pictures and sign a few autographs and and stuff like that. So that's my. Right. That's my short version. So, okay, But like why? Why? What what would be the point of abductions then? Um, Why not? I mean, if we're the if we're the current, if you're a siren, that's that's just my ride. But I don't have to go right. <laughs> the um the it, if we are the current surface, seriously, guys, turn it down. Uh, if the um if we're the current surface population, the surface civilization, you're gonna want to check on people from time to time or groups. People are gonna be curious. Ain't no different, again, not to diminish our civilization. We're wonderful and advanced, and we're all beautiful snowflakes. But we we tag seals and dolphins and any other species we care about. You know, we don't necessarily do it to livestock, but we do do it to the the more important species on our world. We do this to things now. You know, we put on trackers. If we had the tech, we'd probably chip all sorts of fun things. So that's what I think. I think it's just a curiosity. Yeah, and, right. and there's there's rules in place. Um, I I mean, some of it might be might be a little more advanced. Some of it might be psychological. Some of it might be genetic. I hard to say, but there's all sorts of reasons you could you could choose. It really depends on the civilization that's messing with you. Well, yeah, I mean, I definitely don't think that they're. I, mean, I, I think they are from around here, um, sure. or interdimensional, or whatever. whatever and, sure, it is. why not interdimensional? What? Why the heck um, not? Yeah. On, they can walk through walls, and that's that's definitely something interdimensional to me. So yeah, um, well, cool. Well, I appreciate it. Thank you very much. Is that it? Well, want yeah, to do any, yeah. shout, want I mean, any I, shout I outs? Shout outs to anybody? What? <laughs> no, I don't know. I'm like I, I'm not sure where I'm actually where I stand as to the shape of the earth. Oh no, no, that's I'm okay. Kind of, that's okay. No, but if, I'm I mean, if you, undecided. If, you know, if you know my stuff and you seem like an open minded guy. You know what? We, we, your journey will take you wherever it takes you. No worries. Oh no! I mean, I've seen. I mean, there's there's things that are, you shouldn't be able to see through line of sight that are absolutely there. There's videos of it. I mean, there's definitely that. There's no denying that. I, I, I mean, we're seeing things that we shouldn't be able to see according right. to the math that we're given, like a hundred percent. Is there something else even weirder going on? That's that seems to be the question for me. So, All right. Well, hey, yeah. thank you reaching out and, and thank you for asking that question i don't actually get that very often yeah that's why i asked it because I hadn't, I hadn't actually heard you answer it but well, I thank appreciate you it, man take care all right all right have a good one you too bye-bye bye-bye okay can we actually i don't actually have any calls stacked up at the moment so this is your last chance to call in i will take two or three more before the end of the night phone number to call in is 720-897 Six one 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 or two one three two three 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 nine nine eight. Operators are still standing by, and by that I mean me. There's a call that might come in. Will they make it into? Yes, they are. Let's try this guy right here. Oh, I know peanut gallery. I know guy is is no calls here. All right, uh, three oh nine area code. You are on live with Strange World. What's up? I made it. You the did. phones work. I I don't believe it. <laughs> I well, I'm it's, it's a, it's I've a been trying phone. to call for a few weeks now. Well, no, we changed phone systems last I've week. I've heard. Yeah, I've got the backup number and this number saved in my phone now, just so I could call. Which which one did you Tonight use? Tonight has been an amazing show. Yeah, I uh, used the first one, the six one one. I'm still trying to get over the fact we talk to people in the future. <laughs> oh, Australia. Yeah, yeah, Australia. Right, right. Always in the future, which is just creepy. 
in a way. Because every time I hear them oh, say yeah. that, I keep thinking of JFK the movie where because because operations get screwed up because people don't remember time zones. And New Zealand, when uh, Donald Sutherland was flying through New Zealand, the, the JFK stuff had already been in the papers, even though it was the next day. It's like somebody had already shot them the information. Oh, oh, they that one up. Uh, it did, they didn't realize. It was like, oh, yeah, because they screwed up the time zones. No different than the time zone that was screwed up during 9-11, not to digress in 9-11. But when the British television Amazing. station that flew over, when Building 7 collapsed, and they announced it 20 minutes before it collapsed, and it was still burning over his shoulder. That's because they screwed up the time zones. Instead of announcing it 40 oh, minutes geez. after it happened, they announced it 20 minutes before it happened, which comes off a little suspicious. Right, right. That's just me. Well, and then you got anyone who didn't know what was going on yet freaking out. Right. Right. Can you imagine, yeah. by the way, being um, maybe yeah. in Building 7 when the British team announced it? By the way, Building 7 has a collapse. It was <laughs> on my 15th floor of Building 7 going, holy crap, I got to get out of here. <laughs> exactly. So um, what uh, didn't what's... really have anything to call. Just been trying to call for a few weeks and say hi and like the show. Been listening for a long time. And thanks. I should thank well, you. You know, help, help me here then all. because I should probably na- I don't usually name the shows until afterwards. What do you think I should call the show? Do, is there anything struck you? Oh oh. Well, either few call from the future or. uh Something to do with them lowriders. That was the other thing. That was the whole thing that made me want to call in tonight. <laughs> Flat Earth calls from the future, and I don't know how I'm going to tie that into lowriders. Lowriders. Oh, low <laughs> Flat Earth lowrider calls from the future. Well, it practically there you writes, go. writes itself. <laughs> yeah, or just cool. call it hitting switches. Hitting switches? <laughs> Wait, that's, is that, a, that's, that's a, a slogan I grew term. up with. That's a lowrider too. Yeah, yeah. A lot of people aren't going to get that though. If I'm going to do that, I might as well throw well, in that whole you know, snitches get stitches and uh, bitches get. Oh ditches. yeah, and then you're going to get a whole bad rap of. You know. Yeah, I'm white though. I can't. I cannot represent. You know, West Said. <laughs> that's that's my problem. If I'm rolling around a '80s lowrider on spoke, somebody's going to think I'm just crazy. <laughs> What was that Chris Rock line that that some people put rims on anything? I got, I got a toaster sitting Oh, uh, well, no. Oh, yeah. Or uh, uh, they're only tens, but I keep them clean. What? <laughs> I've never heard if that. they're That's only great. ten-inch rims. Oh, yeah. yeah. That's, That's old. Good. Okay, ten inch. Well, uh, that's all I got for you tonight, so I just wanted to say thank you again. Oh, oh hey. thanks for Thanks for calling in, man. Not a problem. Have a good night. Have a good one. All right. So he's gone. And do we have time for one more? Yeah, we do. Last chance. 720-897-6111 or 213-233-3998. But I think the main line's working just fine. 720-897-6111. We're not bouncing it off any satellites. That's what you're worried about. Or going through the GPS switch switchboard, or going through the DID, DID. That's not even a thing. DOD, CIA, FBI, Naval Intelligence, uh, ATF, DEA, all that fun stuff. And will I get to read an email? I actually, it actually might happen. Uh, NSA. Up oh, call might be coming in. Uh, Six five one. Here we go. Let's pick up 651 real quick. I don't think I'm going to do any emails tonight. 651 area code. Yeah, I know. Peanut Gallery saying Flat Earth News, not email. Yeah, okay. If I, if I, this call doesn't go long enough, I will do Flat Earth News. All right, 651, are you there? Well, yes, I am, Mark. And good news, this call is not going to go that long. I got a <laughs> title for you. What is it? Low Riding into the Flat Future. Low riding in the flat future. You know what? That's good. I'll take it. Anyone has a better title than that? No. Low, low, low riding in the flat future. All right. Cool. All right, brother. To all the callers, good, good show, good calls, and <laughs> keep it flat. All right, man. Keep it flat. Have a good one. Take care.
All right, bye-bye. Okay. Uh, well, heck, I've still got nine minutes. We can take one more. With whatever, low riding in the flat future. Low riding in the flat future. I'm going to have to remember that. Somebody write that down. And future low riders on the flat earth. That's what Peanut Gallery came up with. Now I've, compl- I've forgotten the guys. Uh, okay, let's see what this one's coming in as. Uh, this one's, uh, you know what? Pe- you guys can't just keep calling in for for titles and stuff. Okay, 443. What's the deal? Yeah. Hey, I have a, a very funny video. <laughs> it's in Spanish. It's funny. Listen, it's, it's a guy who's doing comedy about flat earth. And he's making fun of the audience because it's in Spanish. It's something. Yes, it's uh, oh, not, well, uh, well, email it to me. Recess. D- seriously. Okay. Uh, D- G- G- it, G- it, it, it's whole, It's absolutely hilarious. You will. You'll die laughing. All right, all right. All right. But you got. But you guys, you got to email it to me. Uh, and how do you know? How do you know he's talking about flat Earth? Do you know Spanish? It, it's translated. Oh, okay. Yeah, yeah. Definitely send it to me. I'd love to see if somebody's... <laughs> it's, it's absolutely delicious. Well, do you know what I saw yesterday before I let you go? I watched I watched some Canadian... I thought they were middle school. Canadian high school kids do a flat earth mockumentary. Hey, was, look, I'm about to give you the uh, link right now for the... Well, yeah. where you, you get it? You're emailing to me though, right? I can give it to you right now. Well, no, I'm, dude, I'm on a show. I can't look at it right okay. this second. Right. Right. They're actually right. on the right. air right. doing right. a show. Just yeah, grab, my, grab my email on from... TV. Sierra what? Plana on... Uh, Sierra Plana on Spanish TV. Flat Earth. It's not on YouTube? It's C-I-E-R-R-A P-L-A-N-A Okay. All right. All right. I promise I will check it out. And then he hung up. <laughs> Killing me. Uh, all right. Uh, we got six minutes left. Can you guys stop me from actually reading this one email? Oh, wait, wait, wait. I got to do Flat Earth News. Okay, what's happening in Flat Earth in the last week? All right, so I'm going into YouTube, typing in Flat Earth, set the filter to one week. See so what we got. Uh, Bro Sanchez is actually doing a live hangout as we speak. 180 people, roughly. Globusters did his season finale before he goes to Hawaii for a little vacation. Some well-needed R&R. Some guy named Mark Sargent talked to the Denver Post. Also his 120th interview. You would have thought he would have completely snapped and gone off the rails by doing 120 interviews on Flat Earth, but he hasn't yet. We'll see what happens if he goes on top of a clock tower with a high-powered rifle. Uh, Let's see here. World history official. Beyond the imaginary curve. He keeps cranking them out which is great. Who says he hasn't snapped, says the peanut gallery. And that's why I like you, peanut gallery, because you always get your shots in. Usually during the show, he talks to peanuts, yes. Political hillbilly, before it's too late, ODD reality, blah, blah, blah. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm sorry, I got to do a quick, quick, quick plug. Doing uh, The next time you guys are going to hear me is going to be on... Flat Earth and Other Hot Potatoes tomorrow at 3 Pacific, 6 Eastern, that's 5 Central, 4 Mountain. And do not forget, if you haven't already, if you're in Texas, if you're anywhere near the Houston area, Patricia Steer is going to be doing a meetup. It's going to be catered, free food, as a matter of fact. Houston meetup, Sunday, July 2nd, 7 p.m. at La Griglia Italian Restaurant in River Oaks, that is 2002 West Gray Street in Houston, Texas. Parking is free. Valet parking is optional. And she's going to be there. You don't have to pay for dinner, but you do have to buy your own drinks. Uh, it's going to be really, really good. You can just email her directly at Miss M I S S Steer, S T E E R E, at gmail.com. And oh, by the way, there's going to be a, a full blown documentary film team, film team going to be there. We didn't ask them. They're, they're coming in from Los Angeles, Hollywood people, can be shooting a documentary. So if you want to be on film, or if you don't want to be on film, you can tell them you don't want to be on film, you just want the free food. But I, if I was in the Houston area, I'd totally go to this. But they've already talked to me, and they've already filmed me, and I'm sure they're tired of me. And let's see here, give or take 40 minutes. And let's see if it, oh, Clooney's people, Clooney's people? Clooney, it's, that nah, it doesn't matter. Let's see. 
Uh, any more calls? Do I have a call on hold? No, I don't. Let's see if there's anything else in Flat Earth news that catches my eye. Karen Pettit, Pettit also did a hangout with me, Santos Bonacci, allegedly Dave, Darren Nesbitt, and Oliver Ludlow. We all did that one. That was kind of fun. Let's see if there's anything else. Anything else? Rob's balloon video. Yeah, I'm getting to it. There's a lot of videos out here over the last week. Bro Sanchez, Rob. Rob Skiba, you'll look him up if you get a chance. Rob Skiba is doing uh, some wonderful balloon footage, weather balloon stuff. He's got professional teams working on this thing, and they one of the cameras fell off the bottom of it, but they did get some other footage. It's good. So they've already blown off out Mythbusters, Mythbusters, who said that they were seeing the curve from a spy plane, which is a bunch of crap. And we got three minutes to the break. Last chance. If anyone wants to get in a parting shot before we wrap it up for the night, phone number again is 720-897-6111. That is 720-897-6111 or 213-233-3998. Brand new phone system, by the way, which what happens is when you call in now, instead of uh, getting a busy signal or going to voicemail, you're just going to be stacked up and you can listen to the show. You can actually listen to me talking to other callers through your phone like a regular full-blown station, and then I will pick you up as I have time. But I do try to answer answer calls in the order they're received. So if you drop off for whatever reason, you go to the bottom of the queue and then you got to climb your way back up. Two minutes. I'm going to read this. I got to finish. I got to finish this email so I at least get it off my screen. Flat Earth question. Good evening. I am a 50 year old female, well educated with a high IQ. I am now officially a fellow Flat Earther. I recently discovered your YouTube channel. Thank you for your informative and interesting videos where you gave out your email address. I've done hours and hours of research and I'm down to only one problem I can't resolve. I'm either missing it or haven't landed on the right site to explain it, so I'm reaching out for help. Could you possibly direct me to an article or video that can explain lengthy days in the Southern Hemisphere during North America's summer? The models I've seen make long days uh, long days during summer and long nights during winter in places like Boro, Alaska, somewhat understandable. But how is the reverse true as one progresses past the equator into cities like Stanley, Falkland Islands, which get upwards of 16 hours of daylight in late December? Any help can you provide? We much appreciate it. Thank you in advance. Kim, her name is Kimberly Sell. And Kim, hopefully you're listening. I direct you to uh, the, the first two would be DITRH. To look at that one, uh, his channel is called DITRH, otherwise known as Deep Inside the Rabbit Hole. Go to Jeffrey Grupp's uh, YouTube page, which is zeteticism.com on YouTube, or check out Jaronism. Jaron's got some good stuff. Heck, Bob from Globusters has got some good stuff on that. I don't generally focus on it. Because when it comes to the sky, just about anything's impossible with instancing and phasing and all the other fun things that you can do with software. So when it comes to the display system, look, what can we do with televisions? Imagine that multiplied by, oh, I don't know, a million. That's what we can do. Special thanks to Peanut Gallery tonight. We're going to wrap the show up. Uh, all the callers. Great show. Thank you for everybody who's called in. Thanks uh, for the one email I read. And I will probably do an email show this week. Tomorrow I'm going to be on Flat Earth and Other Hot Potatoes at 3 Pacific, 6 Eastern. And remember, I, I don't have all the um, uh, Ten Commandments by, done down my heart. I just try to tell people, look, treat others better than treat yourself. The world will be a better place. Uh, but until next week, come back. We'll be here. Same flat time. Same flat channel. Hey, I never this? What is this? Geocentric Earth? <laughs> nice. I had to make a new one. What are you doing? <laughs>